sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy. Good morning, people of God. The psalmist reminds us that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Let the people of God say amen. I'm excited about continuing our theme for the next few weeks, as long as God tells us to deal with it. Our overall theme is strengthened by the struggle. But today, I'd like to emphasize another aspect of that theme coming from the life, uh, the familiar story of Joseph. So let's read, if you will, Genesis chapter 39, verses 2 through 4. That is, again, Genesis chapter 39 verses 2 through 4, and I will be reading uh, as usual or as customary in the New International Version. Let's hear what the, the word of the Lord has to say to us today. It reads, the Lord was with Joseph. So he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in the eyes, in his eyes, and became his attendant. Portiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything that he owned. Let us say man for the blessed word of God. Amen. Progressing through painful experiences. Uh, human life is characterized by ebbs and flows, amen. Uh, our ancestors put it this way, sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. What human beings must realize is that life does not always have a smooth road upon which we travel. Sometimes there are some devastating potholes and some, some obstructions in the road that hinder our progress. And the thing about moving forward depends upon uh, uh, our ability to assess and to navigate the situation. Uh, 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 painful experiences can have the uh, effect of uh, anesthetizing, causing us to uh, uh, lose the, uh, the courage and the will to move on. That happens sometimes when sudden death, amen, 
a loved one is, is taken away and that pain is so deep, it causes us to stagnate. We can't get out of that realm of pain and anxiety. But let me tell you, I believe that if we trust in God, God gives us the medicine that we need to move beyond our pain, uh, painful experiences and progress down the road of life. Now, 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 in today's world, can I tell you there's a lot of pain in this world? especially what's going on in, in terms of social relations. I, I was pained deeply this week by the decision that no police officer was found accountable or guilty in the murder of Breonna Taylor. That caused me deep pain. It, it caused me reason to pause, to wonder what, whenever uh, 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 will people of color receive the kind of justice that they deserve. When it seems obvious that a guilty verdict should come forward, there's always some kind of loophole that hinders the wheels of justice. That can cause pain. But, but listen, don't stop, don't get out of, don't see struggling to make sure that things change. I hear Martin King now. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. We have to stay in the fight and not give up and give in to our pain to feel that nothing's going to change no matter what you do. Imagine where we'd be if our ancestors felt that way. They kept on singing, kept on praying that one day we would be free. It took a while, but yet we have a certain degree of freedom that they never believed that they could experience. So stay in the struggle. It may be painful, but we must stay in the struggle because I believe what the word of God says, and that is that God can give you favor in the presence of your enemies. And I believe that uh, what David spoke about poetically, uh, a Joseph uh, experienced in his own life that God can give you favor, God can prepare a table, not, not work with me now. He said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That means you have to have favor with somebody. If your enemies are willing to feed you and take care of you, say amen, somebody. But progressing through painful experiences. Can I tell you, uh, uh, looking at the life of, of Joseph, we know the end of the story. But, but we, we, we have to imagine uh, with Joseph that we don't always know, know what's going to happen as events unfold. And sometimes in the midst of our pain, we can give in to that pain and it can hinder our progress. Amen. I, I, I said progressing through painful experiences. Pain can sometimes hinder your progress. So I want to look at briefly the life of, of, of Joseph, because sometimes the initial pain that we can experience in life can come from our family of origin. Amen. Uh, 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 listen, one thing you can choose, you can choose your boyfriend, your girlfriend, choose your job, but you can't choose your family. <laughs> you can't choose who your mama and your daddy is. Amen, somebody. You can't choose who your siblings are. So, so your, your family of origin leaves nothing up to you. You come into a family, you got to deal with the mess <laughs> or the blessing that you find yourself in. But it's made even worse, people of God, when, when, when parents create the tension that exists in the family. Because the Bible does tell us that Jacob loved Joseph. Now, why does he love Joseph? Because he loved his baby mama. Amen. Ain't nothing new in the world today. <laughs> there were baby mamas even back in B.C., before Christ. <laughs> and, 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 and Jacob had several baby mamas. Amen, somebody. I ain't trying to talk down to nobody. I'm just talking real talk. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes in that, that situation where th there was uh, an accepted polygamy at that time, he had children by several women. And as human nature would dictate, he loved the children of the woman he loved the most. Amen. And so Joseph was from his beloved Rachel. 
Therefore, he showed favor to him that was obvious to the entire family. So that when he came of a certain age, uh, some, some scholars say about 17 years old, some say maybe a little younger, but whatever the year, he made him a, a vestment that uh, indicated that he was favored in the family. Uh, it's usually translated a coat of many colors. So he, he made him or had him made a vestment that displayed and characterized his love for him. And you know what this does in family? It causes tension because children, can I say this again? Children want and desire the love of their parents. And they want to be loved just as much as the other children in the family. That's why when I was coming up, if my mother did something for one sibling, she said, I'm going to get you next because I love each one of you the same. And I often wonder why she had to emphasize that. But when I got old enough to read the Bible, I understood why. Because showing favoritism in your family of origin can create issues. And listen, if you exacerbate that issue, knowing that you're favored, it will have repercussions. Okay, real life situation. I'm the baby in my family. Amen. I loved being the baby. Uh, it took me years to accept that because whenever they called me the baby when I was younger, I would say, I'm not a baby. I want to be the baby in the family. Now, amen, as we, as we get older, <laughs> that sounds real good. But, but I knew that I had a certain favor as the baby in the family. And as long as mama and daddy were around, I reveled in that favor. I would do all kinds of devilish stuff knowing that I wouldn't suffer, you know, repercussions for it. My brothers can be watching TV. I just slap them in the back of the head and run to mama. And mama would say, leave him alone. You know you, he, he too small for y'all to be hitting on. I said, hey, that works. Let me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but listen, one, one year, I was about six years old. Mom and daddy were both working second shift. You know, you favored as long as you got the protection of your parents. <laughs> oh, but when mom and daddy went to work, they tortured me, threw me in closets and, and closed the door, and I screamed till I almost fainted. And then they would do other things to torture me, smack me around when mom and daddy weren't around. And listen, by the time mom and daddy got, daddy got home, I was asleep. By the time I woke up to tell the story, they were off to school. So, uh, so I learned that, that Joseph, can I tell you, from my story, I learned that Joseph did the same thing when he had a dream that his sheaves, you know, they were binding sheaves. He telling everybody, you know, and y'all's bow down to mine. If you already have tension, that don't make your siblings love you anymore. <laughs> then he had a second dream. His mom was a moon, a star. He was, he was a star. He said, all y'all bow down to my star. And the Bible says that his brothers hated him even more. Listen, sometimes even when you have dreams, dreams of your future, you can't always share your stuff too soon. You can't even sometimes share with your family. Sometimes family may not even understand. But can I tell you, Joseph's lack of maturity caused him to uh, emphasize and to strengthen the tension in his family. So that when his father told him to go check on his brothers as they were shepherding the flock, it says that he brought back a, a, a bad report regarding them. That's just like the baby in the family, isn't it? You want to continue to curry favor with mom and daddy, make everybody else look bad so you can look good. Uh, any, any, any older siblings in the house? I, I know older siblings feel that baby, you know, uh, always treat him like a baby. Let him, her grow up. Uh, you just keep making exceptions for them. But, but, but babies can, can make things worse. And that's what Joseph did. I'm moving through something here, if you don't mind. Uh, 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 you know the story. That when he was coming again, they plotted to kill him. But thank God, one of his brothers, Reuben, said, let, 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 let's not kill him. That, we don't want that kind of blood on our hands. And listen, I pray that family situations don't become so exacerbated that we think about hurting or harming uh, not our family members, but certainly not anyone 
in general, but certainly not family members. So, so they devised the plan to sell him to the Ishmaelites. You know the story. They sold him for 20 shekels. And then Joseph's pain really began because uh, uh, the experience of enslavement, uh, I, I've never been there, but I've read enough to know that when human beings are in bondage, they're not jumping around and shouting for joy. That is a painful experience to have all your rights denied and you become the property of another human being. But can I tell you that at this time, Joseph was not perceptive of God's plan for his life. So, so he had to go to Potiphar's house. Amen. You know the story. He was sold to an Egyptian magistrate by the name of Potiphar. And here's my point. How do you learn to be productive through your pain? This is what the Bible says. When, when he went to Potiphar's house, uh, Potiphar recognized that the Lord was with him. Whatever situation you find yourself in, if the Lord is with you, even though things may not unfold at the pace that you want it to unfold, if God is with you, God will give you the strength to deal with any painful experience you might face in life. Can I tell you how important that is? There are folks today who are going through uh, diagnoses that will cause some of us to cringe. I don't know what it feels like for a medical doctor doctor to tell me you have a few months to live. I don't know what it feels like for them to tell me you have terminal stage four cancer. I don't know what that feels like, but I do know this. If I can go into that conversation knowing that the Lord is with me, even though I may experience pain, I know that I'm not walking that road alone. Can I get an amen, somebody? If the Lord is with you as you go through your pain, you know that all things will work out one way or the other because even if you're called home you know that you got a place that you can call home amen somebody so 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 Potiphar saw something in him that was different listen as a magistrate in Egypt he saw all kinds of slaves what what separates you from the crowd uh, what, what makes you different from anybody else? When folks at work are complaining about the boss, are you the first one to lead the charge? Don't get quiet on me. Ain't nobody here, but still, I know at home, y'all, amen, y'all thinking about this. Say, talk to the TV. <laughs> uh, are, are you leading the charge? What are you doing to distinguish yourself? I'll never forget an experience I had as a, as a student at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee way back in 19... 84, 85, you know, I was just in one of those zones where I didn't have a penny in my pocket, just dust in my pocket, you know, that, that pocket dust that you pull out, that lint. But still, I, uh, I had learned enough. I had accepted the Lord, and I said, I, 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 what, what can I do to be different? So even if I went to the store to get a piece of bread, a loaf of bread or the, uh, whatever, I put on some slacks. I put on my nice shoes and I will put on a dress shirt. And sometimes my mom will say, boy, I just want you to go get some milk. You ain't got to do it. <laughs> mom will get frustrated. It don't take all that. Just, just. I said, no, no, no. I, I, I represent somebody now. So I would always have on some, some dress shoes and slacks and a shirt. I've grown all of that now, but that's okay. That's another story. But I remember uh, I, I lost one job on Friday. I was a student in uh, junior and, and I went to the student employment center and while everyone else had on jeans and tennis shoes and sweats and what have you, I had on dress shoes, I had on my slacks and a shirt and uh, I always tried to keep my hair dead. Hey, my hair, was, that has changed too. Y'all pray for me. Uh, <laughs> but at that time I was trying to become something. Amen. And so I remember standing in a long line of students. I had to fill out a job for the, for the business school and hope I could have something uh, by Monday. And there was a gentleman peeking out of his office and he kept looking. And I, I felt uncomfortable. I said, I didn't do anything. Why why this gentleman keep looking at me? You know, I thought I was in trouble. What did I do? And so I got a little closer. He told me to come here. 
And I came, and he said, uh, uh, what are you applying for? I said, uh, the business school. He said, well, I work here. It was the uh, 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 amen. I can't remember the office now. It, 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 it was uh, registrar. Amen, registrar. He said, I work in the registrar's office. And he said, I want you to work for me. And I said, why? He said, because you look like you have something on the ball. Can I get an amen? You look like you have something on the ball. Out of all those students in the room applying for jobs, what made me stand out? Well, initially, perhaps it was what I had on. It certainly was not my confidence. I just believe, now, now, y'all don't have to agree with me on this, but I just believe God gives you favor. And sometimes folk can't even explain why you stand out from somebody else. And so I, I went to the student uh, job, employment center without a job, and on Monday I had two. <laughs> don't tell me God can't work it out for you. If the Lord is with you, things will work out in your favor. And so, so this is what was going on with, with Joseph. Even as an enslaved human being, uh, Potiphar saw something in him that the others did not have. And so can I tell you, when, when God is with you, it, it, it makes your painful experience less prohibitive. You can still move forward. You can still move on. You can still get things done. God can still give you favor in the midst of your pain. That's what I love about God. God is not hindered by anything. The one thing God cannot do is lie. And he's given us this promise that he will be with us. And if you have that promise, no matter what you have to face in life, you can still progress. And you know what I learned? I learned uh, last week I told y'all, y'all have to learn how to tap. That is, thank God, so it'll change your attitude and you can move into praise. Today, I want y'all to learn how to play tag. That is, uh, uh, te testify about God. Can I add another G there? It's still tag, and it? T-A-G-G. <laughs> testify about God's goodness. That's what you need to do when you play tag. And then when you testify about God's goodness, then you touch another group member and tell them about how good God is so everybody can get into the praise party. Now, I imagine Joseph was wondering, even in the midst of his pain, what's happening. But when God give you a little re reprieve in the midst of your struggle, it should give you a reason to thank God. You know why I thank God? God because things are not as bad as they could be. Things could be worse than they are. But because I still have a little strength in my body, I still have my mind stayed on him, I can find a reason to rise above my painful experiences knowing that God owns the future. And if God owns the future and I'm in God, I know that I have a future worth living for. So I want to encourage you today. Learn how to thank God daily. Give God some praise. That's the source of your strength through your pain. Don't allow your pain to paralyze your praise. Keep on thanking him. Keep on giving him praise. And I promise that your future will unfold in ways that you never could imagine. I get frustrated about the world sometimes, but I know that God's got the whole world in his hands. That nothing can happen without God uh, and his will. So I have peace in my mind and in my heart, knowing that all things are going to work out well because God is with me and I am in God. I want to encourage you today that if God is with you, you can progress, make progress through your painful experiences. God, thank you today. Thank you today, God, that you are with us, that you're leading and, and guiding us even through the midnight hours. And God, when we trust in you, we have this confidence. We are a lot like the world who have no hope. We have hope in you through our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he went down in the grave for three, three long days. I know that the disciples were wondering where their lives would go and what would happen. But on the third day, he got up and there was hope and there was joy. He gives us the pattern that even through pain and the darkness of death and life, that we have ultimate victory through him who loved us. We thank you, God. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen.